Diggory Haydock here with the Vintage Gun Journal, just um, with some actions here to show you which demonstrate the basic developments of the breech loader in Britain through the 1800s. The first one here is, uh, is the first breech loader introduced into Britain after the Great Exhibition. This one is by Lang. It was a pin fire. It's now a centre fire. It's been converted. But this um, is, is a development, slight development, of the Le Faux Show forward facing under lever. And you can see this is an inert action. In order to make it work, you have to manually move the lever. The barrels then drop on a hinge. To close it, you have to again manually shut the lever. So this type of action is called an inert action because it has no spring to help you shut the gun. And that was very common throughout the 1860s. And here's another example. Again, a converted pin fire. Uh, this one by Adams. His own patent here requires you to move that button and the gun opens. But again, it doesn't shut itself. You actually need to manoeuvre everything manually. So another inert action. Actually quite, uh, quite quick and easy to, to, to work, but still requiring you as the user to provide all the work. Probably the most successful of the inert actions was the 1858-59 emergence of the Jones rotary underlever. We've all seen these. Again, you manually move the lever and then as you close it, the screw grip does move it around, but you have to lock it closed yourself. Very, very strong action. Actually, quite convenient and easy to use. This is a gun of about 1874 by Thorne of London. Now, the next step was to create guns which you didn't have to manually shut. Um, probably the best known of these, the most successful um, combination, is this top lever. Top levers was first brought into breech loaders by Wesley Richards, um, but it's not until that was teamed with the, the 1863 Purdy Bolt and the Scott Spindle of 1865 that brought us this best known method. Again, this is a snap action. Now you'll see some people in gun shows or at gun shops or in videos probably closing a snap action gun like this. totally defeats the object of it being a snap action. These things were designed for fast firing cycles. So you want to be able to open the lever, drop the gun, put your cartridges in, shut it, shoot, repeat. It does not need you to impede the movement of the bolt snapping back into the bites by manually, slowly and gently easing it together. It is designed to be opened and closed with a robust action. Now, it should be smooth. People are quite right to not want you to see people slamming guns. They don't need a slam. It needs to be a progressive movement. But it is a snap action. So let it snap. And then the final development there was to introduce spring power to help open the gun as well. So here we have another snap action gun also like the last one we just looked at, a Purdy. But this one is the Beasley 1880 self opener. The gun jumps open of its own accord under spring pressure and then snaps closed. Again, 
See, the bolt won't even come back again properly if it's nicely rejointed like this one is. It's good and tight. It requires a snap. So, there you are. I hope that's been some uh, help. The progression from the early inert actions requiring the shooter to do everything manually to uh, the self-opening snap action side lock ejector that we uh, still build today and still see on shoots all over the country. I hope that's been interesting. If you do enjoy these sort of subjects, do have a look online at the Vintage Gun Journal. It's free to read, um, absolutely independent and jam-packed full of this kind of stuff. So do have a look and if you like it, tell your friends.